This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to-dos. Too busy with holiday plans to cook, but want to make sure you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. When you're too busy running around to plan lunch, Factor has you covered with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go, no microwave required. Head to factormeals.com slash MC911pod50 and use code MC911pod50 to get 50% off. That's code MC911pod50 at factormeals.com slash MC911pod50 to get 50% off. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. So you've resolved to actually sit down and eat dinner around the table, but what do you do about those nights when your schedule is packed? Turn to HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals, including their 15-minute recipes designed to help minimize mealtime stress. Every single meal I've had from HelloFresh has had easy-to-follow instructions, fresh ingredients, and when it's done, I feel like I'm out at my favorite restaurant. Go to HelloFresh.com slash MC911free and use code MC911free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash MC911free with code MC911free. day in the life of a dispatcher or police officer is more times than not very hectic and mysterious. As you all know by now, the calls we receive are just like a phrase from the movie Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. That's police and dispatch work in general. One minute there's a minor traffic accident and the next you're yelling for someone to put the gun down or worse. The episode today, that's no different. I'm going over some police and dispatch interactions that are pretty rare. If initially we don't know how to handle them, we certainly can use them for training after the fact. So stuff like this either doesn't happen as easily or ever again. Let's buckle up and get ready for a pretty good bit of audio in this one. Welcome back to Music City 911. What's the location of your emergency? Uh, 312 Fairground Road, St. Bridget School. Okay, do you need police, fire, medical there? I need police. Okay, what's going on? I have a trespasser. I have a gentleman here that has trespassed into our school open house asking questions and claiming to be the parent of a daughter, and he is not. And so I need a police officer to investigate and inquire. He's a, he's, he's and how, how do we know that he is not a parent? 
because now I'm questioning him and he's given me names that is not a daughter. We have nobody here by that name. He gave us a different name and now he's changing names. And the parent who he was questioning about that daughter is starting to get irate, which I don't blame him. Yeah, hang on just a second, okay? Let me get him started and I'm gonna ask you some more questions, okay? Okay, okay. I guess. So the police are on the way, so we don't have to get too far into it. Are you looking for your daughter? Kind of just trying to figure out. Well, who are you here with today? Why are you here today? Okay, what is, um, is he a white male, black male, Hispanic? White male. What's he wearing? A uh, blue t-shirt, blue cap. Beard, dark beard. Okay. Black shorts. Where is he at exactly? Like, is he inside of the school uh, in the parking lot? We're outside the uh, parish activity center, which is the last building on the property. You said the parish activity center? Yes. Your first name is Reed? Reed what? Do you want me to someone to get there? It's what? Police are on the way. Did he give you a name? Yes, his name is his name is Reed Berent. B R okay. Duran, sorry, Reed Duran, D U R A N. How many of the classrooms do you walk in? Did he come in a vehicle or on foot? Uh, how'd you get here? Oh, I drove here. He drove. And did you see what kind of car he drove in, or? What kind of car are you in? Let's see. Hyundai Sonata. Hyundai what Sonata. Color? What color? Burgundy. Burgundy. Okay, and is it just you two standing there? Uh, three of us. Okay. Got to tell me something you know. You haven't seen her. You've never met her. I honestly. Is that the parent? Yes. Is he able to just separate? That way we can kind of keep it peaceful. Yeah. We'll have an officer okay. go and speak with him. All right. They want us to separate right now. Yeah. I want you to stay with. I want you to stay with Reed, and I want the parent to kind of go somewhere else, just to make sure right. that we're keeping it peaceful, and we'll have an right. officer come and speak with them also. We'll wait on the officer. Thank you. This is an odd one from top to bottom. A man walks into a school and claims he's the father of a kid, but he's not. It's no doubt a very scary situation for everyone involved. The principal, teachers, the parents, and I'm hoping at least not the kids. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that they're too young to really remember any of this. On this 911 call, though, the dispatcher, it seems like she's doing something that a lot of the other dispatchers on other episodes have done as well. It sounds like she's fielding both the phone call and handling the dispatch end of it at the same time. She got some brief initial information, which was just enough to get the police started that way at least. Then, after getting the police started, she jumped back on the call to get a pretty good description of the guy that they were talking about. From the sounds of it on the call, it seems this guy entered the school, zoned in on one child, and luckily, the principal didn't recognize the guy, and when he questioned him, figured out really quickly that the guy isn't a parent. He was impersonating a parent. He didn't have the child's name correct. What he was wanting to do, we really don't know from the call, but whatever his intent was, as I said before, pretty scary stuff. Towards the end of the call, the dispatcher asked if the parent could be separated from the guy. I get the logic there. You had the father of the child standing right next to this suspect who had targeted his kid and targeted for reasons we don't know yet. That could end up being an overall dangerous situation, but I think, in this case, more for the suspect than the other people there. But at the same time, I wouldn't want this guy to get away. The principal and the father are both there with this guy willingly as a dispatcher you can't ask someone to hold someone there 
but this is one of those times where not saying anything might do the trick. Police got to the school and entered. When they got there, they started some routine questions with the guy. They didn't get far at this point, but they asked if he would be willing to go back to the police station for a little bit of further questioning. He wasn't under arrest. He voluntarily went to the police station. The officer then took him into an interrogation room. Being he wasn't under arrest and was there voluntarily, he wasn't handcuffed. Up until now, the suspect had been cooperative. You could hear on the 911 call, he was answering questions willingly. Gave his name, even told what kind of car he drove up to the school in. He could have stayed silent and not said a word, but he was given all this info without any hesitation. So it seemed he was non-violent and police had no reason to believe up till this point that he was a violent person at all. So the suspect is sitting at a table facing away from the officer while the officer is sitting in another chair behind him and to the right of the suspect. The table is completely bare aside from a pen to write with likely to sign a statement from the suspect. And then this happened. Put your hands on your back now. Stop. Put your hands on your back now. You kidding me right now? Put your hands on your back now. Try to stab me, really? What are you trying to stab me with? You kidding me? Hit him with him. Where was the pen? I don't fucking know. It's right on the table. Right there. Yeah, yeah, no, I know where it is now, but was it on the table? On the table. Okay. We'll get him off his chest. Stand up. Where do you want to go? It was a little hard to tell from just the audio, but the suspect grabbed the pen, lunged at the police officer trying to stab him with it in the head or the neck. Luckily, the officer was observant and caught the attack and put the suspect down on the ground. As you heard, backup arrived a few seconds later to help out, but by that time, the suspect was already handcuffed. What did the officers find out after? They ended up questioning the suspect, who was a 35-year-old by the name of Reed Duran, and found out he had a plan before he walked into the school. And it was not something with good intentions at all. Exactly the opposite. Reed had planned to go into the school and find a child, act like that child's parent, offer the child a starburst that was laced with tranquilizers, and after the child had passed out, He was going to leave the school with him. He said he was going to kidnap the small child and then perform sexual acts. After this, police searched Reed's apartment and ended up finding a good amount of child pornography on his computer. He was charged with attempted kidnapping, felonious assault, and escape. This is still an ongoing case having just occurred last month. More charges are always possible to be filed, and I hope they are. Currently, he's being held without bond. When at hey, there's there's when an armed robbery taking place? place right now at Macy's. He's Where at? At Macy's. At m- which mall? Uh, mall of Georgia. Uh, okay. He's in a he's in a silver Toyota pickup truck. He just busted through all the windows and glass, and he's taking off right now. Can okay, windows right and here? glass of what? The Macy's. And the, the display case at the jewelry counter. Come over here. Did he have a weapon? Yeah. Okay. He took the bag off of his truck. Okay. So he, did he throw it on the ground? I don't know. He took the bag off his truck. It's a gray Tundra, single cab. He's taking off right now. Passing by Dillard. Sorry, I'm that scared. Passing by Dillard? Yeah, yeah heading towards towards the Hooters. Right now, it's uh, tinted windows, looks to be a Hispanic male, 5'10", 5, you know, 5'11", something like that. 
had a mask and a, and a hat on. Okay, Hispanic male? Yes. And he's, he's about to get, he's passing in front of Hooters right now, heading towards Smaller Georgia Boulevard and Beautiful Highway. Beautiful Drive? Yeah. What color was his hat? Black. And what about his mask? Uh, I mean, I, I was in the store with my wife. We ran out. It was grayish in color. Okay. And um, he's headed towards um, Buford Drive? Yes. Yeah. From Mall of Georgia Boulevard? That is correct, yes. And, and now I'm out of sight. Was anybody we injured, at, sir? Not that I'm aware of. I grabbed my wife. We ran out of the store. We were at the Lens Crafters just inside in front mm -hmm. of the makeup. Uh, excuse me, in front of the jewelry. What type of gun did he have? I didn't. Uh, he had a large pipe in his hand, and it looked like he had something on his hip that appeared to be a weapon, but I couldn't tell. And he had a backpack. Okay. Do you think it was a gun on his hip? I do, but I don't. I can't confirm that. Had a piece of galvanized pipe. Okay. There's uh, another gentleman who's also calling uh, 911 at the moment. Okay. We don't have, need anybody else unless he has visual on him. What is your name? My name is... And your phone number, please? And someone, I'm just being told, one of the Macy's said some uh, worker got stabbed. Somebody got stabbed? Can you confirm yes, that, please? No. I'm... Uh, did you say someone got stabbed? Yeah. Someone did confirm someone got stabbed. Tell you anything about the victims that got stabbed? I know you're not I'm, inside, I'm looking sir, but... at, uh, I'm looking. He's losing a lot of blood. He's laying on the ground. They, they're trying to triage him with some paper towels and some clothing. Okay. Uh, Anybody, it, can you please take off a shirt, anything? Press uh, that's what, there, pressure There's clothing the and everything. There's clothing and everything around. They're attempting to triage it right now. It looks okay. Like they're trying can to you just listen to me for so. one second? Just I yeah. need them to place firm, steady pressure on the wound. Do not yeah. lift it up to look. Just press firmly. If it continues to bleed, you're not pressing hard enough. Okay. All right. Tell them those instructions for me. Okay. So don't, they're, 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 they're applying pressure. And How old is the, uh, the, the victim? I'm sorry, ask the question again. The victim. How old are they, male or female? It's a male, uh, approximately 50 years old, wearing a green shirt. His name is... Uh, his leg is Where bleeding. Where is he bleeding from? Leaves. His leg, his right lower leg, just below the knee, it looks like the amount of blood that's coming out that they hit a main artery. Okay. We need to get EMS here as quickly as possible. They are coming, lights and sirens, sir. I need them to press firm, steady they are, they are. They are doing that, and they've, they've, they've tied a band around his, his leg. Let me get a belt. Yep. Guys, see if you can tie more pressure with a belt. Yes. Okay, the other victim, sir, I know that you're worried about him. They're taking care of him. The other victim, are the, where are they stabbed at? It's, 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 it's just the one victim that was stabbed twice. Okay. It looks like he's, he's stabbed in the ribs and the leg. Okay. It's just, I need it's just, them to press firm, steady pressure on both wounds for me, okay? Y'all hear that? Firm, steady pressure on both. Don't lift off. Don't don't look. Just firm, steady. Okay. He's, he's bleeding. He's bleeding real okay. bad. Okay. I know, sir. I need to make sure he continues to breathe for us. If he stops breathing yep. at any time, I need you to tell me so I can tell you how to do CPR, okay? Yes, ma'am. I'm certified in CPR. He's fine right now. He's just in a, in a tremendous amount of pain. Keep his head elevated a little bit and just help him to breathe. He just breathe slow and steady, sir. Help is on the way. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Is he still breathing okay, sir? Still conscious? No, he's, he's, he's conscious, alert, and breathing okay. is fine for now. I want you to just kind of teach him how to breathe. Take a deep breath in slowly, out slowly. In slowly, out slowly, okay? Breathe real close. In, real deep in through the nose. Steady, constant, out through the mouth. Just calm down. Help is on the way. Is he at the jewelry counter? Yes. He's directly in front of what was smash and grab. Okay. Just tell him to keep breathing for me, okay? Yep. Hey, just breathe, buddy. No, just breathe. It's okay, man. Tell the people that are applying the pressure to his wounds, if, if, that's, if it's bleeding through those shirts, get a different shirt and add it on top of that one. Do not lift it up whatsoever, okay? Will do. Just, 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 Sir, even if you have to do it, because you may be able to put more pressure, if you have to put an extra shirt on top of it so you don't get blood on you if you don't want to, okay? Um, I'm, it's, 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 You're doing good, sir. Thank you, okay? Thank you no for worries. helping him. No worries. They're coming lights and sirens, okay? Is the bleeding slowing down at all? It does not appear to be, no ma'am. Okay. More no, pressure for me. More the, pressure. The, the, Just, the it may the hurt main. him. It may hurt him to put pressure, but as hard as you can, I need you to apply that pressure because he needs that blood inside of him more than him being in heart, okay? You got it. David, everybody, everybody's fine. You did a great job, dude. This is the last three. Three, buddy. Ma'am, he's starting to go into shock a little bit. Okay. Tell him to breathe for me. If he passes out, I need everybody to stay calm for me. I know it's stressful. But I need well, to know if he continues to breathe, and if not, I need to help you with CPR, okay? Really focus in on your breathing. Don't worry about anybody else, okay? Well, thank you. You don't want to go into shock, okay? So just breathe. Relax. Right. 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 We got one. We got one. And he doesn't go the way right now, okay? Just breathe. Is he still awake? Yes. 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 Okay. Just tell him to keep breathing for me, okay? Is it yeah, the leg, it's still the leg bleeding just as bad, down. right? Okay. The leg is not slowing down at all. Just, just keep trying to put that pressure on for me, okay? I know it hurts him, but as hard as you can, put that pressure on for me. Hey, Adam, pull on the belt as hard as you can. Like, we want to cut off all circulation. As much as you need I know it hurts, David. Just breathe. Just breathe. Even, if, sir, even if y'all have that belt on, I need the pressure being put on it as well, okay? With the shirt or something. Okay. I just needed to make sure. They're on their way. They're pulling in now, sir, okay? They're pulling in right now, man. Yes, sir, if you can get somebody to the door outside, somebody else, not you. I need you to stay with him. No worries, yes, ma'am. Make sure they go in from the dark side, okay? So they don't go to the different way. Yeah, if they're pulling in, ma'am, I think they're at the wrong entrance. Uh -huh. Are you calling me? 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 Are you calling
Yes. Is he still awake? Yes, he is. Yes. Okay. Is somebody at the door to guide the paramedics in when they get there? Yeah, good. Okay, look at me, into the nose, out through the mouth, steady your breathing. There you go. There you go. That's good perfect. job. Keep perfect. encouraging him, okay? You're doing a good job. Focus on the breathing. Is he still awake for us, Marcus? Yes, okay. Is that an officer? Yes, ma'am. Is that an officer? officer? It's the police officer, yes, ma'am. He said he okay. got fired in the parking lot as well. There were, but we're just worried about him, okay? Um, but I need you to just take care of him. The officer is going to get the paramedics to him, okay? This call was a different sort of chaotic. We heard that a man walked into a Macy's store, which is in the mall of Georgia in Gwinnett County, smashed out some glass in an attempted robbery, then stabbed an employee. In the 911 call, we hear the dispatcher actually gives some very good instructions. The main two things with this is the suspect information and trying to save the stabbing victim. In something like this, the priorities can shift depending on the situation. If the suspect is still directly on the scene, a good description and location is immediately necessary before anything else. There's always potential for more victims, so before rendering aid to the person or people that have been harmed, we need to address the suspect aspect of it. Once we had learned the suspect had left the store, the focus can shift to helping out anyone that needs medical aid. The person stabbed was bleeding badly. That needed to be stopped and quickly. The direct pressure on the wound is the quickest and easiest way to do this. We always say to put a clean, dry cloth or a towel directly on the wound and press down firmly. You don't want to lift that up to look because the bleeding can start back again. I also like that she said that it could possibly hurt the person more. She's not wrong there. If you're stabbed and someone pushes on the spot where you've been stabbed, it's going to cause some more pain, but it will stop the bleeding if enough pressure is given. We also hear the caller try to apply a tourniquet by using a belt. This isn't something a lot of agencies will suggest doing, but it can be even more effective at stopping the bleeding. Getting back to what happened there, the suspect, 27-year-old Jose Reyes Serrato, walked into the Macy store with the intent to steal jewelry. He walked in with a crowbar and started smashing the glass and display cases at the jewelry counter. When an employee tried to intervene and stop him, the suspect pulled out a large knife and stabbed the employee several times. On the call, it sounded like the main wound was on the leg. That was a bad one, but the victim was also stabbed in the chest area, collapsing a lung. Luckily, that employee is in stable condition in the hospital and at the time of recording is expected to make it. After Serato left the store, he made it about a half mile down the road before officers, using description given by the caller on the 911 call, they saw his truck and attempted to stop him. They ended up ramming the truck with their patrol vehicle. At that point, the suspect got out and ran from police into a parking lot at a nearby grocery store while still holding the big knife that he used in the attack. Police ended up shooting Serato and then taking him into custody. Some people have the notion that it's not okay to shoot a fleeing suspect like this. That's not the case. The Supreme Court had a case based here out of my state, Tennessee versus Garner. In the decision, police would be allowed to use deadly force only when a suspect poses a substantial risk of serious physical harm to public or police, even when fleeing. This guy had just stabbed and greatly injured someone and was running while still holding the weapon that was used in the attack. Pretty safe to say he was a risk to the public still. This guy was no newbie to run-ins with the police. Back in 2019, he was arrested several times, once for intentionally closing a door on his sister's hand, later getting into it with his brother, 
then smashing up his car windshield, dashboard, and visor. And then finally, later in the year, he stole a Cadillac Escalade from a dealership and was charged with felony theft. This incident, I don't think he's going to be out of jail anytime soon. He was charged with aggravated assault, fleeing police, aggravated battery, armed robbery, and criminal damage to property. This all happened just a few days ago, and the suspect is still awaiting a bond hearing. That's going to do it for this episode, but before I go, another podcast recommendation. This week from the state directly to my north, Kentucky. The show is called Coffee and Cases, and the hosts Maggie and Allison always have a grand chat and manage to mingle that in with a good true crime case. Have a listen to their trailer. Greetings from the Bluegrass State. That's Kentucky, if y'all didn't know. We want to tell you about the hottest new podcast on the block, Coffee and Cases. If you fancy yourself an at-home detective, if you find yourself yelling at the TV during that new true crime documentary, then you, my friend, are a certified sleuth hound. Just like us. On Coffee and Cases podcast, you'll hear about the missing, the murdered, and the unsolved. But the cases you've rarely, if ever, heard about. All from the perspective of two teacher friends, rule followers, and self-proclaimed scaredy cats. Join me, Allison, and me, Maggie, each week as we take on cases that are often overlooked but are screaming for justice. Finally, a true crime podcast where you don't have to monitor the foul language. Coffee and Cases is a true crime guilty pleasure that you don't actually have to feel guilty about. Check out Coffee and Cases every Thursday for a new episode on your favorite podcasting app. As always, be sure to like Music City 901 on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and come on over to Facebook for the discussion group that we have there. There's generally a lot of chat and a lot of crime-related stuff going on there. Head over to patreon.com slash musiccity901 for ad-free episodes and bonus content, usually in the form of many episodes, one of which you should expect in the next few days. Also, if you want some Music City 911 gear, just go to my website, musiccity911.com. Click on the link and then pick up an official logoed Music City 911 t shirt or hoodie, any other items, or even the Y'all Have a Gooden items. Above all else, share this with your friends and family, anyone who you think might like the show. And until next time, for Beezit City 911, this is Brandon, and of course, y'all have a good one.